Hello everyone and welcome to Weekly Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you for joining me today, November 13th, 2019. As we take a look at the astrological energies over the next week or so, dive in to this Mercury retrograde energies that are really quite beautiful and dynamic. And I also have to share with you today some intuitive messages and visuals I've been receiving about the ending of this year and the ending of this decade. And I hope that these messages are further confirmation for you of what you've also been feeling and sensing about your journey. I hope it helps you understand why this decade has been so big at an individual level as well as a collective level. And I hope it helps affirm where you are called to go next, where your energy is being inspired to move forward, to voyage into a new path, and to trust that there are good things happening now. There are good things happening now, and it is our responsibility to not allow the weight of the world or dense energies or heavy patterns to be too much of a weight or an anchor. We are meant to remember that we are limitless. We are open. We are filled with possibilities and potentials, and to not be locked into the human experience too much. Yes, our energy is being called there regularly. Yes, this is where we live. We live on this planet. We live in these human suits. We have our human minds and our human egos and our human emotions. But there's meant to also be a big reminder of your vastness, of the joy of this journey, of where you can tap into a place of gratitude, a place of happiness for what you are learning, for how far you've come how much you've healed. This is really important right now because we are more alive than ever before. And what I mean by that is that after this 1111 portal and the Taurus full moon on November 12th, I started seeing some new energies that I would describe as light codes. Now, light codes are essentially the rays of energy, the rays of light that come from the sun that are known as neutrinos. And these are similar to snowflakes. Uh, Just as the snow falls and every snowflake is different, every light that comes in is a light code or a light flake, if you will. And it has its own design pattern energy. And I'm feeling like there are these new light codes coming in that are meant to revitalize us, that are meant to lift us up out of the domains of our humanness and to reconnect us to our unlimited energy field. It's like that vastness of the cosmos, that reminder that the sun's rays are healing, are warmth, are energizing, are nourishing us, and that these light codes will warm you up internally. And I'm seeing it as that light in the solar plexus, that fire that burns, and we must tend to that fire, and we must tend to the energy of life that sustains us. And so we're moving through very big energies, yes, and we're moving into a very big decade, yes. But you are here with the ability to make the right decisions for yourself, to trust yourself, to follow your joy, to move into this next time in your life Uh, whether you look at it as the energy or the next decade or wherever you feel the energy speaks to you, there's a sense here of a cleansing, of a very deep cleansing that has removed a lot of karma, that's removed a lot of areas in the ego that were limiting you, those the false ego. And I see it related to the karmic cycles, the karmic patterns, the karmic energies 
where essentially you were unconscious about something in your life or you were unaware or you just didn't know perhaps everything that was involved things were veiled there were there were hidden people or there were uh, hidden motives there's this removal that's been happening that has basically brought you back to your own light to your own place of truth in who you are. And this is a self-contained energy. A self-contained energy within you that you are reconnecting to and meeting, re-meeting for the first time. Or perhaps it could feel like you've been disconnected from this part of yourself uh, for many lifetimes. But this is an ender, an and understanding that everything that has been completed, removed, finished, it's really for your best and highest good, even though it doesn't feel that way to the ego or to the heart or to the mind. You are being asked to go deeper, to find the gold within. And this directly relates to the Mercury retrograde energies of right now. We have one more week of Mercury retrograde in Scorpio, where Mercury will go back to 11 degrees of Scorpio. Now at this time, as I'm doing this podcast live, Mercury retrograde is at 16 degrees of Scorpio, making an exact sextile to Saturn, at 16 degrees of Capricorn and trining Neptune at 15 degrees, 58 minutes, Pisces retrograde. Scorpio is receiving strength from Capricorn and Pisces energies right now. And this is showing up in this Mercury retrograde that's allowing your mind to be reprogrammed, reworked, to have new perceptions, understand higher concepts, to understand where you've been locked in to any power battles or control issues that are draining you, exhausting you, wearing you out. This is a mental reprieve. This is stepping back from your own mind, stepping out of your own mind, and looking up to, it's like I'm seeing looking up to the sun, but then looking up to understand the soul's perspective of it all. This is a very powerful time right now, because not only is this Mercury harmoniously connecting with Saturn and Neptune, But the sun in Scorpio is at 20 degrees, approaching a beautiful sextile to Pluto at 21 degrees of Capricorn, also receiving strength and grounding and an understanding of where your power is right now. And I feel this as a very interesting, a very interesting new sense of power that's within you, not outside of you. And I'm actually feeling it in the structure of the body as the bones, the bones in the body being rejuvenated with new strength. Now, uh, that isn't simply through calcium, but it's through an energetic infusion within you, within you, that's understanding what it means to walk in the world with a true sense of who you are and you no longer compromise what you want, what you need, how you feel, what's important to you. There's this changeover in what it means to be strong in your physical self, in your body, in your breath, I'm feeling the lungs. I'm feeling, again, the energy of 
safe to be in your power in a whole new way. Uh, the Scorpio energies at an unconscious level perceive danger, threats, and attacks everywhere. And we move through the Scorpio journey, rising in our consciousness, rising in our sense of power, rising in our emotional journey, our emotional consciousness to understand that how you responsibly use your energy is what makes you powerful. And so the Scorpio energy can sting out of defense, out of the an attack or a perceived attack, out of control, uh, out of a desire to not share, um, and on and on it goes. And the journey through Scorpio, especially the sun in Scorpio, is to remind you that you're bigger than that, you're more than that, you're meant to rise above these patterns that have been based on fight or flight, fear, uh, that have been based on unconscious programming that you could have absorbed from others or you could have been carrying through lifetimes. And so the Scorpio energy can certainly mature emotionally. It can mature through its understanding of self, uh, through its understanding of looking at itself in the mirror instead of looking at other people. There can be a lot of jealousy, a lot of comparison with the unconscious Scorpio. But the Scorpio energy rises in its true power by claiming a new understanding of itself, of how it is loved, of how it is valued, of how it is accepted, and of how it can use its own magic to make something new, to make something beautiful. And that's the Scorpio journey. It is a very intense one, emotionally intense. And I've described it before as the Scorpio energy being a hot tub. And that's because Scorpio is a water sign and it's a fixed water sign. Fixed meaning it doesn't change, it doesn't budge, it just can swirl. And so it swirls in a passion, a desire, and an ambition. But that hot tub can get very murky and dirty if it isn't cleansed, if it isn't purged, if the water doesn't drain out or be filtered out. So this pertains to our emotional needs where you are holding on to rage, comparison, jealousy, resentment, anger, pain, and how you're taking responsibility for filtering it and moving it through. And this can be uncomfortable, it's intense, it can involve the dark night of the soul, and it typically is going into areas of yourself that you haven't wanted to see before. And yet, there's no other way out. You know, there's only through the tunnel. That's the way out, is through the tunnel, and at the end of the tunnel is the light. So there's a, an understanding of your strength as you move through some of these parts of yourself that perhaps you haven't seen before, or you didn't want to see before, because that's another part of that Scorpio fixed energy, is that it might not see itself and how it's showing up in the world. Uh, instead, it stays fixed on a pattern that ultimately is, is detrimental and creates these ongoing emotional loops emotional loops. So there's a lot of intensity with this energy. But I also feel that there can be a deep desire to rise up and to move through it. And that is so supported right now as we have this Mercury retrograde energy working so beautifully with outer planets and the sun working powerfully with Pluto. This is really an important time this next week 
because there's energy here that's going to surge you through where you've been stuck. And I'm seeing it as that power surge to push you through where you've been not only stuck, but in these loops that have prevented you from taking responsibility for all of your energy and all of your experiences. And now this pertains to the bigger energies of this past decade. So we embarked on a really big journey over the past 10 years that you were meant to see parts of yourself that you didn't realize you were carrying, that, that were walking with you. The shadow energies, the ego energies, the emotional patterns, the uh, mental loops. It's like there were things that we were meant to see in ourselves. And this decade has ultimately been a gift from the universe, God, source, spirit. It has been a time of revealing to you more of who you are through the experiences of your life, more of what you want by understanding what you don't want. And I'm seeing how the energies really came in in 2008 when Pluto went into Capricorn. Now, this was a big time globally with the changes in the financial markets, the mortgage industry, uh, the insurance industry, you know, a lot of big changes in these institutions and structures, which is what Capricorn rules. And Pluto is going to stay in Capricorn until 2025. So over this span of time, 2008 to 2025, we are understanding how we show up in the world, our professional responsibilities, what we have built, uh, businesses, uh, institutions, uh, what you've put into to create your professional world, your your life that others would describe you by, meaning, you know, Capricorn is your public status. Um, it's the title you're known at, you're known by in your, in your work, but it's also how you're known through legal titles, being a uh, husband, wife, uh, parent, uh, you know, any, any kind of title that you have shows up through Capricorn. And so we are going through this huge reevaluation renovation of our public standing, of our public titles. And there's been this deep clearing out this year uh, that, of course, it's been affecting everybody on the planet, albeit differently, but it's been happening with the Saturn in Capricorn taking stock and saying, okay, it's time to make some new commitments and it's time to let some old commitments go. And it's been extra potent and extra strong with the south node in Capricorn removing, 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 showing you the truth of something, showing you what's been happening uh, with others, with uh, financing, with I'm, I'm feeling like all these areas of business have just been highlighted. And now we're moving forward into 2020 that has some of the biggest astrology that we've had in years. And there's this push right now for you to consciously complete cycles. Cycles of, I'm saying, I mean, I'm just feeling this as professional roles, business titles, things that are no longer fulfilling. They're no longer who you really are. They're no longer what you really want. And I'm feeling all this energy in a spiral. Uh, and it's a fast-moving spiral that's actually helping you move forward. Now, yes, there are real-life responsibilities we have to tend to and take care of. And we have to be aware of 
the areas of our lives that still require our responsibility. But I just feel this karmic push to let go, to really let go of what is no longer in your heart. And this is the North Node in Cancer reminding you what is true for you, what feels good to you, what really brings you comfort and joy. And with this Mercury retrograde, going back to 11 degrees of Scorpio, there's going to be another trine to the North Node that's going to be in play. The We'll call it the 17th of November until the 24th. And I'm just using a two degree orb with that. And it, you could use a longer orb. I mean, I even think that this energy is happening now um, because of how Mercury is only six degrees away from the North Node. But the energy is growing through this month that you're reconnecting with what truly matters to you in your heart, in your authentic self. Again, that private inner world that you know. There is support for you to trust that, to trust yourself, to trust who you are more than ever. And I don't want to sound like a broken record, but this is such an important theme right now because it's who you're here to be. You're here to be an individual. You're here to be your own light, your own gifts, your own energy field. And we get caught up in these energy cycles and, and in these, it's like a group mentality or a expectation mentality or this is what I have to be for other people or for my family or for my partner or for the world and that's where the removal has happened in a really big way over this past decade. The understanding that you've been there, done that now. Yeah, you played a certain game or you stood in a certain position or you had some experiences that ultimately are meant to be beneficial. Where you take forward some aspects of it but you're able to let the rest of it go. And I know that this can seem like an ongoing release process, and it really has been. And, and I want to validate that, that it could feel like you've been releasing for years. And it's true. I mean, I'm, I'm getting this image again of the 2012 to 2015 energies that were very big astrologically, where we had Pluto in Capricorn and Uranus in Aries making seven exact squares over three years. And this is very rare in astrology. This is a big deal. Uh, this was a lot of shakeups. But I, what I'm feeling at an intuitive level was that it shook up the global energies in a way that brought up more of what we knew at a soul level we could handle. So it's like it opened up these doorways of energies to be dealt with, to be understood, whether that is, I feel it as karma, I feel it as Atlantis energies, I feel it as uh, definitely themes from many incarnations. It's like it shook up what was dormant and said, okay, let's take care of this now. We're going to take care of this over the next decade. And it could feel like eight long years, but that's actually an acceleration where you can do something in eight years that would have taken you a lifetime. And that's another perspective to understand right now. Uh, going back to this letting go or release cycles that have been very big, especially since 2015, is that it has been probably very arduous and difficult at times. And it's almost like, when is this intensity, intensity going to let up? 
But what I feel around this, again, I'm seeing this spiraling energy moving quickly, that there was a lot cleaned up this decade that you're not going to have to revisit ever, ever, ever again. So when you look at it from that vantage point, it's worth it. It was such a deep energy clearing, like such a deep finale. That that's why it was so strong or so intense. And what I'm seeing our assignment is, our, <laughs> our energy assignment here uh, in November and December is to do what you need to do to complete something on your terms. And that can feel a little tricky because there's probably real world situations that are going to progress into next year. But you can give yourself a piece right now on your own terms around how you're going to approach it going forward. And that is your responsibility. That's the mental patterns that we shift up. That's the mental reprogramming that this Mercury retrograde is asking us to trust. Trust there's another vantage point. Trust there's deeper healing. Trust that you can set yourself free on your own terms. Because that's where your power lies. So it's looking at something in a whole new way. And I'm feeling so strongly that November and December are supporting us in saying, you know what, I'm just going to end this mental cycle on my terms. And you might write a letter that you never send. You might practice Ho'oponopono for forgiveness. You might do energy exercises. You might make a commitment to yourself that every time this same theme, pattern, emotion comes up, I am willing to handle it differently. I'm willing to step out of my own karmic cycle or loop with this and Look at it from a new vantage point, a higher understanding. And of course, that is where you then accelerate. Okay, so that goes back to the spiral I'm seeing. You accelerate through the lesson. You're not keeping yourself trapped. You're not keeping yourself locked into something. And that's when new possibilities emerge, new doorways open, things you never could have fathomed come through to support you. And this goes back to where I'm feeling these new light codes coming through from the sun is that our sun is very alive and is always burning, active, changing. You know, it, it's an amazing vessel of energy, but it also is feeling the impact from the changes in our galaxy and that affects then the energy the sun puts out. And as we approach the energy of the last week of November, specifically November 22nd, 23rd, 24th. No, actually, I'm going to start again. November 19th, November 19th. 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and 26th, there's a huge energy coming through over this whole week that relates to the galactic center, Jupiter, Venus, and the Sagittarius new moon. And it's like this huge clearing of what you believe for yourself. It's removing, it's like blasting away judgments. I feel this energy blasting away, and it, it's just, it feels like judgments um, that actually came through a lot of religions over many centuries that have been on the planet, 
held on the planet. And I feel that there's enough people now who want to blast away those judgments, who want to blast away our perceptions that limit us, that uh, I'm getting like a strangle, like that strangle us, um, that minimize what we're capable of, that keep us restricted. And I'm feeling like this is such a powerful week to blast away where we have internalized those belief systems in ourselves. So you can say, I believe that I am complete with this energy. I am done with this pattern. I believe there is more for me. I believe there is more joy for me. I believe there is greater peace. I believe there is great love. I believe there is great abundance. I believe there is great happiness. As I say these words, how do you feel? Do you start to feel a calm and a relax? It's almost like the energy starts to settle in where you then absorb these higher understandings of what's possible in your life and what's possible in your future that is not based on what you've been going through or what's been really hard. Because for some of you, I'm feeling like this really intense weariness, like you're bone dry. You're just so worn out. You're so exhausted. Um, it's a, it's a, a famine. It's almost like there's just nothing left. And the beauty in that is you start turning inward and you start searching and seeking for new ways to understand what's happening and what's going on. And that then opens you up to more potentials and possibilities. So it's interesting because again, I'm feeling like this timeline running dry of this past decade since 2012. For some of you, it could be even 2008 when Pluto went into Capricorn And until, especially the end of the year, there's this energy of I'm, I'm bone dry and I'm, I'm worn out. And that's an amazing place to be because now you're going to open up to the new infusion of energies that will support you and that will help you move into the next decade ready, renewed, inspired, and a sense of now it's time for this new chapter to begin. So a lot of the energy right now um, is this interesting dance between the planets in Scorpio, which are the Sun and Mercury in Scorpio. We have Venus and Jupiter in Sagittarius, helping us think bigger, move ahead, look at what we've learned, stay inspired, uh, trust a process, have faith in ourselves. And then we have the two planets in Capricorn, Saturn and Pluto, that remind us, of course, we have our real world lives to take care of and things we must, must do. But there's this energy of deep, deep transformation that cannot be ignored because it's supporting you. And I'm actually feeling how, how light filled it is. And to trust, again, what you need to move into that is right for you. Not about what other people think, other people say, other people's expectations. Not about anything outside of you. Where are you feeling inspired and ready to go? Because it's who you truly are. It's who you truly are. And now you are new. There's, again, this renewal energy that's taking shape. And this next week, you could feel your energy being pulled into a higher awareness of where you want to go. And that is the universe preparing you and reminding you of all potentials, all possibilities, all openings that can unfold, to get out of our dang head about it and to stay open to what we don't know. 
Now, as I was preparing for this podcast, I was being directed to share with you um, some words from one of the books that I channeled. And it's funny, I I don't do selfies on social media and I don't really talk about my books. Uh, But this book, it's called The Unlimited Sparks of a Bonfire. And it's a collection of channeled soul stories. And I wrote it over a number of years. And as I was writing it, I had no idea how it was going to come together. I was just writing these stories that came through. I could feel the characters, the emotions, all of it. And so it's seven short stories, and it's seven because it's supposed to pertain to the seven chakras, although I was told not to identify the seven chakras because it could be different for each person, uh, but that's why there's seven stories. And they're, they take place at different locations around the planet, which is also significant, And it's meant to help clear out some of the universal soul themes that we each carry, that we each have, especially around uh, relationships and love, around money, around soul groups, uh, around deep healing through anger, through loss, um, through adventure, through independence. And so as I was preparing for this story, they brought my attention to the channeled messages that they gave me from chapter three. And this is a story of a man who remembers his lifetime as part of an African tribe and what that experience formed in him at a soul level, the imprint it left in his soul. And how he experienced some really horrible energies that he's now in this life here to heal. And so the the character, his name is Fred, is in a situation where he's trying to separate from his family's business and from the expectations that he's had of himself as well of, of, of his ego. And so I meant to read this this paragraph to you. It goes, And although it went against everything his ego was wanting him to do, Fred felt the greatest peace when he considered just walking away from all of this. Yes, he would be misunderstood for that choice and be viewed as weak. But those perspectives and opinions no longer got to him like they did when he was a younger man. Those people didn't know about the health issues this stress had caused him. They didn't know how much sleep he had lost or how he had endured periods of counseling to work through the anger. They didn't know even half the story, so he wouldn't give their opinions even half a thought. He had to follow what was best for his sanity his health, his psyche, and his conscience. The, bet, the best choice wasn't the right choice, and the right choice wasn't his first choice. But why did he feel such a hesitation to make a choice? And the choice he had to make was walking away from his role, his company, his family, everything that he had put all this time and effort into. And he understood that there was so much more of him that he was now connected to outside of his ego. And the story goes into what unfolds after that. The conversations he has, the understandings that he connects with. And over the following years, he still dreamed about revenge. And he knew he could. He could get back at them. He had the connections, the resources, and the ability to expose all of them. He could easily do it any day of the week. He could go into those parts of himself that knew revenge, that knew how to fight. But that road was only momentarily satisfying and left him starving again for another possibility, another option that did not fire up the parts of himself that he didn't like anymore. In truth, 
And in the quiet of his own heart, he didn't want to be that same asshole anymore. Because if he did those things, all of those sabotaging acts he dreamed about at times, he was just being them, but with a different haircut. He was just reflecting their own nastiness back to them, circling around on the same merry-go-round, and that was exactly what he had wanted to step away from. He didn't want to be that version of himself anymore. He was ready for the next higher version of himself to emerge, the new man he was ready to become. And every time he went down those same paths, of thinking about what he could do, how he could act, how he could respond, he kept arriving at new perspectives. What if this wasn't my battle to fight? What if deciding to follow my gut and step away from that asshole was my true power in the situation? What if simply trusting what I knew was best for me was the only decision I needed to make? and ultimately saved me from years of ongoing struggle. It was hard to believe in these perspectives when there seemed to be very little confirmation of them in the real world. But then the story fast forwards to him being this new version of himself in the world because he followed who he is what he's about, what he's here to do that is on his own terms. And that is what we're meant to choose right now. You're meant to choose life on your own terms. And I know that you know this because we know in our soul, we know in our hearts that that's where all the happiness is. That's where the joy and the abundance and the sense of loving life resides is when we choose who we really are. So over this next week, know that you're supported in decision making and in following what is calling to you next. With one more week of Mercury retrograde, Understand that things are going to change, plans will get canceled, uh, things will get shuffled around, you may have to do some draft versions or redo some things. That's all par for the course. But as Mercury stations direct on November 20th and Mars enters Scorpio on November 20th, there is a fresh surge of energy coming through here that is lifting you up moving you forward, signaling where you're ready to go. And this is an energy that only you can trust and only you can follow. And that's where your power is and that's where the strength is. If you are feeling very heavy and weary, it's okay to rest. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to sit back and tend to yourself, to not force it, to not think that you have to get moving or you're going to miss something. That's not how the universe works. The universe has so many potentials and possibilities for us that it asks you to trust what you need, trust where your energy is, and those those outcomes, those steps, those possibilities will be waiting for you when you are also ready to step up into that fresh direction, and to follow the new path that is whispering to you, that is calling to you. This is working with everybody differently. So you are guided to trust what feels right for you. Uh, This could be something in your internal world. This could be a relationship. This could be at work. This could be in your creative space and your self-expression. It could be in any area of life where you just feel, I'm ready to be more of myself. I can't compromise. I can't hold back what I need to step into and move into. So I hope that this show has given you confirmation of that, that it's reminded you that you're more than how you've known yourself or how other people have known you. And this next period of time is going to be very encouraging 
if you are in alignment with the truth of who you are. Because now that so much karmic energy is over, the karma cycles are completed, you've, you've learned, you've understood some things, you realize you're never going to make that choice again, for example. Now you have set yourself free to follow a higher path. And I hope this show has given you useful things to sit with, understand, and trust in yourself. Because I feel that the end of November brings in a lot of forward-moving energy. A lot of forward-moving energy. And right now, the more you're staying open mentally... And looking at things in a new way, the better off you're going to be and the more you're going to feel in alignment with what you want next. So I'm going to leave it there for now. Thank you so much for your time and listening. And just one more quick thing to share with you. I am so grateful for all of you that I have met and connected with on YouTube. I am beyond grateful to now be at 50,000 subscribers in under two years. I mean, it's been a year and a half, I think, a little more than that, that I've put energy into the YouTube channel. And I'm so grateful to all of you who listen, who like, who subscribe, who comment. Um, Thank you so much. I was so excited to reach 1,000 subscribers. So frankly, I'm over the moon. I'm over the moon 50 times uh, to be at 50,000. And I am looking forward to how we're going to continue this journey together into the next year and the next decade. And we've totally got this. You know, there's going to be a lot of great things happening. So remember that uh, even as the world unfolds around us and big changes occur, there's still a lot of good things to find, to focus on, and to be grateful for. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll be back here next Monday for our next show. Wishing you a beautiful journey through this week in November, and I'll see you back here soon.